In this video, I wanna compare the magnetic force acting on a charge with the electric force that would act on a charge. And as we do, we will see there is so much information packed in these tiny equations and there's such huge differences between the two forces. So let's begin. So to begin with, if we just look at the equations, we, si we find the main difference is over here. The magnetic force, the Lorentz force has V cross in it. And boy, that itself causes a huge difference in the way the two forces behave. So we'll first compare their strengths and then we'll compare their directions, okay? So let's start with the strength of the magnetic force. And for that, let's assume that, let's take an example, okay? Let's say that we have a uniform magnetic field. And in that magnetic field, let's say we have four protons. So one, two, three, four. And let's say this first proton is moving this way with some speed, the second proton is moving this way with the same speed, the third one is moving this way with the same speed, and the fourth one is not moving at all. And what I want you to think about, just by looking at this equation is, what will be the strength of the magnetic force on each one of them? Will it be the same? Will it be different? Why? Can you pause and think about it? All right, to figure out how strong the force is, we have to look at the magnitude of this equation. So if I just look at the magnitude of this force, it's gonna be magnitude of this thing, what will that be? The magnitude of that is just going to be Q into magnitude of V cross B, and the magnitude of V cross B will be magnitude of the velocity times the magneti magnitude of the magnetic field times sine of the angle between the two. So that matters. So the angle between the velocity and the magnetic field matters. So let's look at each one of them. If I look over here, notice the angle between the two is 90 degrees. So over here, sine 90 is gonna be one and that's maximum. Which means over here, this proton is going to actually experience the maximum magnetic force. What about this one? Well, it is the same, pro I mean, it, it has the same charge, same speed, same magnetic field, but look at the angle. The angle is smaller over here and therefore sine theta is gonna be smaller than one and therefore this force will be less than before. So it'll be less. What about this one? Well, over here, they're in the same direction, which means theta is zero. If sine theta is zero, the magnetic force goes to zero, which means this charge is not going to experience any force. No force, zero. What about this charge? Well, it's not moving at all, which means there is no velocity Therefore, this also does not experience any force. What we see right in front of our eyes is that the magnetic force highly depends on the direction of the velocity. It's important that it should be moving, but more importantly, it should be moving, making some angle with the magnetic field. So let's write that down. This, is, this looks important. So what we find is that the magnetic force is maximum when when the two are perpendicular, when velocity is perpendicular to the magnetic field. And we find that the force is a minimum, which is zero, when? When either the velocity is zero or when they are in the same direction. So when velocity is parallel to the magnetic field or when velocity is zero. Okay, now let's look at the electric field. Something we've seen before, the good old familiar electric field. What if I ask the same question? Same four protons, moving with same same four conditions, one moving this way, one moving this way with some speed, same speed, one moving this way with the same speed, this is not moving at all. What do you think will be the electric force on each one of them? Will it be same or different? Okay, can you pause and think about it? For that, we look at the magnitude of the electric force and the magnitude of electric force will be magnitude of Q, which is just Q, into magnitude of E, which is just gonna be E. And so what we find is that there is no velocity in this equation. And therefore electric field says, I don't care about the velocity, I don't care about the direction of the motion, it's gonna put the same force. Which means they're all going to experience the same force. So right in front of your eyes, the big difference, the first big difference is this depends on the velocity, whereas the electric force does not, does not depend on the velocity, does not. All right, now let's look at their directions. And this time let's start with the electric field. So 
If I were to ask you, what is the direction of the electric force here, here, and here, and here? What direction is it? Well, for that, we're just gonna look at the vectors. It says the direction of the electric force will be in the same direction as the electric field. If the charge is positive, it'll be in the opposite direction if the charge is negative. So over here, all of them, because they're protons, will experience the force in this direction in this direction. And so what we find is that the direction of the electric force will always be parallel. So it's in the same direction or in the opposite direction, but always parallel to the electric field. And that's nice. If I know the direction of the electric field, that's all I need, and I will know the direction of the electric force. Positive charge, same direction, negative charge in the opposite direction, simple. What about the direction of the magnetic force? <laughs> This is where the cross product comes in. The direction of the magnetic force is not so straightforward. The direction is gonna be in the direction of the cross product of the velocity and the magnetic field. How do we do that? Well, we've talked about it, but let's quickly recap. How do you do a cross product? So if I take, say, this example, I'm gonna redraw it over here somewhere. So here is my magnetic field, and here is the proton moving upwards with some velocity, let's say V. Now, to figure out the direction of the magnetic force, I have to cross from V to B. So for that, I'm gonna use my right hand. And the way I'll position my right hand is gonna be somewhat like this, so that my palm is facing the velocity vector. It's ready to cross towards B. Notice, as it crosses, the thumb points in the direction of the cross product, so the thumb points in the direction of the magnetic force. So in this case, the magnetic force will be inwards it will be into the screen. This is the direction of the magnetic force. And more importantly, what this means is that, look, the direction of the magnetic force is not parallel to the field, it's perpendicular to the field. It's also perpendicular to the velocity. So over here, what we find is that the magnetic force, magnetic force will always be perpendicular is perpendicular to velocity and is perpendicular to the magnetic field. So again, huge difference here, very straightforward in the same direction. Over here, you need to know both the direction of the magnetic field and the direction of the velocity to figure out what the direction of the force is going to be. But most importantly, this part, the fact that the magnetic force is perpendicular to the velocity has a huge consequence. And to understand that, Again, let me take an example. Let's say I had a very complicated, non-uniform magnetic field. I don't even know how it is. So imagine very complex magnetic field, okay? And in that, I throw a proton. Could be any charged particle, but let's say I throw a proton. And as a result, because it is so complex, let's say it takes some very weird, crooked path through it and comes out like this, okay? My question to you is, do you think the speed of this particle do you think it can change as it moves through the magnetic field? Very specific question, I want you to think about it. Pause and think about it. All right, well, my first thoughts would be, of course, why would it not change? If we have like a very complex magnetic field and you know it's taking a very complex path, its direction is changing, there are forces acting on it, so sure. I mean, clear, surely the <laughs> speed might change, right? But guess what, the speed of this particle will never change. Your magnetic field will never be able to change the speed of a particle, regardless of how complex the field is. And the question is why, you may be wondering, because the magnetic force is always perpendicular to velocity. How does that make any sense? Well, let me give you an example. Not an example, let's think a little bit about it. So if I were to ask you, let's consider, imagine you have some object that's moving this way Okay, my question is, if you want to increase or decrease or change the speed of this particle, what should you do? Well, you should push it, you should put a force on it. What direction should you put a force on it? So let's say you want to increase, then you should push it in the same direction, right? You should push it in the same direction. Is there any other direction you can push it and increase the speed? Yes, you can push it this way and you can increase the speed because when you put a force this way, there is a component of that force, the force has an effect 
in that direction. And that effect is going to accelerate the particle and increase the speed. So as long as your force has a component in the direction of the velocity, it can change the speed. It can increase it or decrease it. But what if your force is perpendicular to the velocity? Now it has no component in the direction of the velocity. As a result, this force cannot change the velocity. All it can do is change the direction, but it cannot change the speed. And since our magnetic force will always be perpendicular to the velocity according to our equation, that means our magnetic force can never change the speed of our particle. Another way to look at it is in terms of work and energy. If you, if you think about the work done by a force, it's, um, it's when, when the force is perpendicular to the displacement vector, that's zero. You've probably seen that in mechanics. So another way to think about it is that our magnetic force does no work and therefore it cannot change the kinetic energy. So a big consequence of this is no change in speed or kinetic energy. And this means, regardless of how complicated, this, this will always hold true. This will always hold true, regardless of whether you're dealing with a uniform or non-uniform magnetic fields. And therefore, it doesn't matter how complex it is, the speed will never ever change. What a beautiful result, right? Okay, what about over here? Can this electric force, can the electric force change the speed of a particle? Again, I want you to pause and think about it. The answer is, Yes, because the electric force does not depend on the velocity direction. So say in this, at this moment in time, yes, it may not change the speed, but over here, definitely it can change the speed. Here, it'll definitely change the speed. So electric force can change the speed of the particle. It can do work. It can do work. In fact, that's one of the reasons why we think about potential, electric potential, because it can do work and, and to talk about that. But magnetic fo forces cannot do work. Huge difference. And so I hope we can appreciate how much information is packed in these little equations. And so you don't have to remember any of these. If you can just deeply understand the equations, everything, all these differences, all the nuances follow immediately.